Sports Beat is brought to you by Ken Gart. We hear you. Trey Young. Oh, what a pass. Oh, 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 that was a lot of fun for sure. Good evening. Welcome to this all star edition of Sports Beat Sunday. I'm Sam Farnsworth. We've got Spencer Linton in the house this weekend, and we've got a lot coming your way over the next 45 minutes. The Jazz, they're one of the hottest teams, the hottest team in the NBA going into the all star break. And Coach Snyder, well, he says they can be even better. Hear what he told us. We'll also take a star-studded walk down memory lane for some of the greatest moments in Utah Jazz All-Star history, plus a full-scale college basketball roundup with the Utes deep in the woods tonight, Sam. BYU's Lob City <laughs> moment and the Aggies back on the rise. Yes, but first, of course, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert making their NBA All-Star debut in Chicago, and KSL is the only local TV station at the United Center. Jeremiah Jensen will join us live from Chicago with reactions from the Jazz Stars in just a few minutes. The format for this year's All-Star Showcase created for a unique fun and downright strange yeah. finish. So here it is. Each of the first three quarters, essentially a 12 minute mini game with quarters one through three starting at a zero zero score. Now stay with me here. The combined scores from the first three quarters added up together before the fourth quarter and then 24 points in honor of Kobe Bryant would be added to the team with the highest score, creating a target score. OK, first team to reach that target score wins. Enough of that. Let's watch basketball. Yeah, let's just do this, right? So the first quarter or game one, if you want to call it, Kawhi Leonard went to Chicago with one mission to sling it from downtown. Hits the first bucket of the game. He made eight three pointers in the game, seven in the first half. LeBron James quick to make the highlight reel with the reverse dunk. Let's jump ahead to this one now. Donovan Mitchell in the game. Pull up three pointer cuts the lead to 12. Then Donovan. Pitching a fastball here. Downfield to Bam out of Ohio for the dunk. How about Rudy? He's going to get in here on the receiving end of the alley oop. Okay, Rudy. And then another one from Gobert. Inside here for the dunk, but it was Team LeBron winning the first quarter 53 to 41. The scoreboard resets at zeros for the second quarter. Giannis Antetokounmpo on an MVP mission early off the alley oop. Giannis would waste little time finding an ability to dunk again. He had nine dunks in the first half. Moments later, what's this? A uh, defense. Rudy Gobert, no less, denies Kawhi Leonard, then alters the follow-up shot. Gobert also with a few dunks on the night. One-handed put back. But the shot of the night from Atlanta's Trey Young from half court. His range knows no bounds. Team Giannis dominates the second quarter 51 to 30. Third quarter, Team Giannis with the cumulative lead by nine. Donovan got a couple of early buckets for Team Giannis, both of those coming inside. But this quarter was all about Rudy Gobert. A little bit of everything in the paint dunks with both hands. And then he's going to throw down with one hand. And, you know, he's got two, then one. How about a reverse? A reverse alley oop, in Ooh. fact. The assist from Trey Young, and he also is going to put in a little rim hanger here, you know, a little emphasis with the chin ups. And, uh, you know, with time expiring, why not go back to the dominant guy? Rudy Gobert with the quarter tying alley oop. Third quarter ends tied, 41 all. All right, let's do some math. Combine the scores from quarters one to three. Team Giannis in the lead with 133 points, add 24 to that. And there's your target score of 157. No time on the clock. First to 157 wins. Team LeBron and Kawhi Leonard erase the nine point deficit quickly. Bucket ties it at 150. Leonard finished with a game high 30. Anthony Davis on an alley oop for the lead. Wild, strange finish. Team LeBron with a 156 155 lead. Next bucket wins Anthony Davis. There was a review there. He's fouled, misses the first free throw. So there's pressure on to knock down this last one and get to 157 for the win. Ice in his veins. He said he missed the second one on purpose, or the first one on purpose, I should say. Team LeBron wins 157-155. Kawhi Leonard is your all-star game MVP. Uh, I told my team I was going to miss the first one and put a little bit more pressure on myself here at home. Uh, 
So I made it look good. I made the miss look good. Back rim. And then, you know, went up to the line. Crowd going crazy. The uh, team now is boring me. You know, Trey Young coming on the floor and touching my hand. And so I just wanted to make sure I put a little extra pressure on myself to knock down the second. Hey, mix it up. You know, there is exactly one local station representing the Beehive State at the All-Star festivities live in Chicago. KSL's team of Jeremiah Jensen, Ben Anderson, and Matt Glade doing work in the Windy City. JJ, let's start with this. How would you explain the atmosphere at the United Center tonight? Oh, Spencer, there's really nothing quite like it. This is some kind of spectacle. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you take some of the biggest names in entertainment and you put them all here in the same building. I mean, I'm bumping into famous people and I'm trying to go to the bathroom. I was almost steamrolled by DJ Khaled as I was trying to make it for this report. It's just, it's just crazy what goes on here. And then you add into the mix the fact that you have the best basketball players on the planet on the same court playing against each other. It's just an unbelievable environment, an unbelievable experience, and Chicago put on a great show this week. And that's why having Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert as a part of this event is so special for the Utah Jazz and for Jazz fans. Donovan Mitchell had seven points in this game, five rebounds, and four assists in 14 minutes in his first All-Star appearance. But of course, that there was the performance of Rudy Gobert that really stood out. I'm not sure anyone anticipated that he would have this big of an impact on the game. In my opinion, he was up for All-Star MVP consideration at one point. He had a double-double with 21 points, 11 rebounds, and a block. He was 10 of 11 from the field. And he also had screen assists and altered shots. It's a shame he wasn't on the floor during the fourth quarter. It would have been interesting to see how he would have impacted the game. As for all the haters that Rudy has, Donovan has a message for them tonight. I think that they should shut up. <laughs> like if you look at his stat line, what do you have? 21 and like 12 or something? Here's Young wide open. Can't hit the three. Oh! Two back was pretty good. I, even myself, I wasn't sure I was going to get that one. It was fun. You know, I just wanted to, like I said, try to give a little show to the fans and, uh, and try to help the team uh, try to get some wins and raise some money for the, for the charity. So, you know, it was, uh, it was fun. People love to talk about, you know, oh, you know, maybe he's not this. And they've been doing that since I got here. You know, one day they'll learn, you know, maybe never. And I always tell them, I say, look, if you have people saying what you can't do, you must be doing something right. You know, so I continue to do that. And, you know, he's... he's I don't think it bothers him either. Hopefully I made my, my family and you know, people from France and, and the Utah Jazz proud. That's, that's all that matters. Now I need to give some love to the NBA. The All-Star game had become irrelevant lately. Games lack competitiveness. Fans were losing interest in the event. It just wasn't fun anymore. So the NBA recognized that and they weren't afraid to make a change. The new format tonight brought that competitiveness back to the All-Star game. And when you have the best players in the world giving their best, you witness something great. And that's what we saw here tonight. Players taking charges in the fourth quarter, arguing calls, actually playing defense. It was a great game and a great experience. And Rudy and Donovan agree. I didn't get to enjoy the first one, so I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was fun. I mean, it was fun. I think, uh, you know, as the game went on, guys, you know, start to play a little more intense and, you know, and uh, it was a very close game. How do you feel about the game ending on free uh, I think it should just be a jump ball and like, clear it out or something. Or that person has to go like one-on-one -on -one against, you know what I mean, something. I, I, don't, I don't think free throws should be it, but like I said, I love I loved the format. I thought it was really exciting. I think the fans and everybody got involved. So I have much to complain about when we lost. So if we won, my hands might be different. This is just... This is just the beginning for Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert at the All-Star game. You'd expect both to make multiple All-Star appearances in the future. This was a significant moment in Utah Jazz history. There's no doubt about that. Two Jazz players playing in an All-Star game for the first time in 20 years. It was a great experience for both players that will only make them better. Well, I think it's just a lot of things. You know, just be around uh, so many great players, uh, some guys that won a lot of, some guys that won championships, some guys that won you know a lot of things for the team and they have a lot of experience uh it's great you know it's great and uh you just you just love just being around these guys honestly just being really you know being from thursday to sunday being the 
all-star. You know, I've here, been here as a young captain for this big rising star, but like, being an all-star, I think that's just the coolest thing. But like I said, you know, I had four days to enjoy, four days to kind of maximize and kind of live it up. But now, like I said, it's time to, to get back to work. Uh, we got things to do, and uh, but I think just being here, being at the events, going to community service things, I think it's pretty special. This was a great weekend for the NBA. The slam dunk contest created a lot of buzz, even some controversy. The new format for the All-Star game was a hit. And for Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, this is a great way for them to showcase what they can do on the biggest stage in basketball. The All-Star game goes to Indianapolis next year, Cleveland next year. And guess what? In 2023, it's coming to Salt Lake City. I asked Rudy and Donovan about that, and they can't wait. You'll hear their response coming up later in Sportsbeat. Until then, from Chicago, I'm Jeremiah Jensen. Back to you guys in Salt Lake City. JJ, fantastic stuff. Thanks so much. Sam, take it away. All right, it's time to jump onto the college court now, where the running Utes still trying to get their first road win in conference play on the road against nationally ranked Oregon. Utah facing that number 17 ranked team earlier today. The Utes would open the game with a big slam from Brandon Carlson. He led the Utes with eight first half points, but then it was the hot shooting of the Ducks that would shine. Peyton Pritchard was on fire, knocking down five three-pointers. Oregon had 10 as a team in the first half alone. Now, Timmy Allen, he did have six points for the Utes in the first half, but Utah was still trailing at the break. In the second half, the Utes would start fighting back. This goaltend on a Ryland Jones three cuts the lead to 11. Then Alfonso Plummer knocks down a three, follows it up with a steal, lays it up and cuts the lead down to nine. But the Utes would fall short and lose. Everyone, Trey Young with the fantastic pass, and Gobert goes up there with the reverse lane. Oh, and the Queen likes it. The Queen Latifah. Sports Beat is brought to you by Ken Garth. We hear you. Brad. Deke score! What a shot by Jesper Bratt. Wins it for the New Jersey Devils in a shootout, snapping a seven-game losing streak for our play of the day. Hey, welcome back to Sportsbeat. The KSL Sports team has been in Chicago all weekend following Donovan and Rudy and the rest of those NBA All-Stars. So let's head back out to Jeremiah Jensen, who's live at the United Center. Had any fun out there yet, J.J.? Oh, it's been such a great experience. And while I've been having this All-Star experience and taking all these things in, I've had this in the back of my mind, 2023, and we know why that's in the back of my mind, because in 2023, Salt Lake City will host this event, which is just remarkable to think about, that it's coming back to Salt Lake City in three, uh, three years from now. It's going to be surreal to have an event like this in Utah on the 30th anniversary of the first and only time that Salt Lake City has hosted the All-Star Game. That was an unbelievable experience. So many legends. Shaq's first All-Star appearance, and of course, John Stockton and Carl Malone being named co-MVPs. Hopefully, Rudy and Donovan will get to have a similar experience and be a part of that game as All-Stars three years from now, and maybe an additional Jazz player as well. We don't know. But they hope, both hope to be a part of that experience. Um, it's going to be amazing. You know, hopefully, you know, we're in there for the first or, um, we're going to have to do our thing. But, you know, I think a weekend like this in Salt Lake is big for the, big for the state, and, and I think it's going to be uh, something really special. It's too, it's too long way to go, but I think it's going to be amazing. You know, I, think the, I think the fans deserve it. The city deserve it. The state deserve it. And, uh, We'll certainly look forward to that three years from now. One more note. It was pretty cool to see the support that Rudy and Donovan had from their own team. Joe Ingles flew out here tonight just for the game. He interrupted his all-star break to come out and support the guys also. Assistant coaches Alex Jensen and Johnny Bryan were here. And Quinn Snyder was here as well, giving their support to Rudy and Donovan. A very important night tonight in the history of the Utah Jazz franchise. We'll see if Rudy and Donovan can make many more all-star appearances in the future. In Chicago, I'm Jeremiah Jensen. Back to you guys in Salt Lake City. Excellent. Thanks, JJ. Great coverage all week. If you missed any of it, you can find it at kslsports.com. Spencer. 
The Utah Jazz displayed a Jekyll and Hyde approach in a two-week span leading up to the All-Star break. Five straight losses followed up by four straight wins to hold down the fourth spot in the Western Conference standings. We focus on more of the winning part in tonight's Jazz Rewind. And a big welcome to downtown Houston, Texas. You see Toyota Center. Another possession for the Jazz. Two balls up and good by Donovan. Russell goes to the basket. Conley on a drive inside, splits the defense and hits it. So there we go. The Jazz are going to two. Clarkson gets it right back. Count it and one for Jordan. A chance to tie or take the lead. Cutting the three ball. A chance to retake the lead with 15 seconds left. Kick it out the corner. Touch of three. Two point game. 1.6 to play. Here we go. Who's going to take this shot to try to tie or win? Outside to Bogey. He's crowded. Three. Oh, the Horn wins in Houston. Well, welcome to American Airlines Center. The Jazz in town to battle the Dallas Mavericks. The Jazz still lead the league in three-point percentage, just under 39%. Well, nice slip by Rudy right there. Oh, Rudy. Rudy goes down the first dunk of the night. Yeah, he tested it. He's testing it early, too. Three-point game. Wow, I'm just impressed. Corner, Clarkson, sweet spot, up and in. Clarkson with 14 and a half. High screen, Gobert slips inside. Oh! Pumps home too. I love the patience of Gobert as Bogdanovich is crowded and he puts it between Porzingis' leg. Porzingis on the front inside. Judy swats it away. Two balls. Clarkson, eight on the shot. He drives inside. Tuck shot off the glass and another bucket. 21. The 10 minute mark. And he ain't on a runner to the run. Oh, the minivan. I'll put it into high gear, George. Mitchell on a stop and go drive, spins inside, inside to Gobert. He'll spin past Persingas and puts it home with two hands. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we recognize Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell for their selections to the NBA All-Star Game in Chicago. Here comes former Jazz man Jay Crowder to Joe. That's, that's good stuff. Bam drives in on good oh, Playing with force. Look at Bam. Just kind of elbows Rudy out of the way. Left the, the rim and comes out. Rudy and Trapping. Right back at you. And the Jazz are going to run the heat out. Lob it. What a week for the Jazz, going into the All-Star break, riding the high of a four-game winning streak. The longest such streak in the NBA right now. Last Sunday's game in Houston was the tone setter for this Jazz vibe going into the break. Here we go. Who's going to take this shot to try to tie or win? Outside to Bogey. He's crowded. Three. Oh, At the Horn wins in Houston. Oh, my goodness, Bowler. Oh, baby, you got to love it. Bojan with the game winner against Houston, his second buzzer beater of the season. I wasn't supposed to be on the court on the last play, the way I played the whole game, but that's the, that's the coaching staff. They believe in me. They, they gave me opportunity to shoot. Takes on a double team and hits a bomb to give Utah the win. And the way we feel about, you know, Bogey, he's our best shooter. Uh, he's a guy who's made big shots in the past for us, and, uh, and we rely on that, you know, and he, and he feels like he's a guy that can do that no matter how he's shooting, and I'm um, just proud of him, you know, him sticking with it, and uh, we're just excited for him. How would you rate that buzzer beater? Better than the Milwaukee one. <laughs> He's the stifle tower, the French rejection, Gobzilla. Talk to the hand because Rudy Gobert's denying opponents the opportunity at scoring buckets. With two blocks against the Miami Heat last Wednesday, Gobert reached 100 for the season. That's six straight seasons. He's blocked at least 100 shots. 
He's denied shots in 43 of the 52 games he's played this year. Back before he entered the NBA, he knew he would one day become an NBA All-Star, even when one of his teammates in France doubted him. Uh, I remember talking to my teammates and back in France, and we talk about it now. I was like, I was telling him like, you, I was kind of like appearing on the draft board, and you know, people knew that I was going to get drafted, but I was telling him that I wanted to be an All-Star. It was like, are you going to get drafted? But let's not get carried away. Don't be All-Star. <laughs> but uh, we still talk about it, so it's. Uh, you know, you gotta believe in yourself and put the work in, and you know, sooner or later, things things happen. So, how do you think the Jazz are doing as a team so far this season? When you look at the win-loss record, the Jazz have the most wins they've ever had as a franchise at the All-Star break with 36. The win percentage, well, it's the best they've had at the break since 2007. But it could have been better, and the Jazz, had they not hit that rough patch at the end of January and into February, Coach Snyder says. You know, that's just how the NBA goes, though, and he's hoping his team has learned from it that they get even more wins when they get back from the break. There's always going to be ups and downs, but I, I think these guys have been willing to be honest with themselves about where we need to be better. If we can keep building on those things, um, we've got a chance to improve in the second half of the year or, you know, whatever, the third after All-Star break. We need each other defensively, so that requires us to be disciplined. I think we've, I think we've begun to develop an identity that, that can help us win. Can we get that man a hefty throat lozenge? <laughs> he needs one, yeah, for sure. Hey, how about the trade for Jordan Clarkson? It's possibly been the most valuable in-season acquisition of the NBA this year. He's been incredible off the bench for the Jazz since he joined the team. More recently, he's been one of the best in the game off the bench. Over the past eight games, Clarkson has had two 30-point games, including 37 against the Nuggets, which is the second highest single game total off the bench in an NBA game this season. He's averaging nearly 22 points per game during that stretch in 26 minutes played. He's also shooting 50% from the three-point line, making 20 28 threes, and according to Donovan, he's a great fit in the locker room. And, you know, obviously we all knew he was a scorer, you know, but I think the biggest thing is the fact that, you know, he's playing team basketball. You know, I'd say he wasn't before, but, you know, I didn't really know much about him outside of he was he could score. Going out there and getting buckets on the offense, man, and he's finding guys who are open, taking his time, and, you know, you know we all love playing with him. Okay, so let's keep this jazz theme rolling. We take a dive into the archive, a dunktastic, dunktastic edition for your All-Star Weekend. This week, we turn back the clock to revisit some of the memorable moments the Jazz have had in the slam dunk contest specifically. Flashback to the year 2012. One Jeremy Evans repping the Jazz in the NBA dunk contest straight out of Western Kentucky. Don't you forget it. That's Hilltopper Pride we're talking about. The power forward hoisting the dunk trophy eight years ago. An unforgettable moment in jazz history. Another fun fact, Jeremy Evans currently playing in EuroLeague ball in Moscow, Russia. Sam? Well, of course, you know we wouldn't forget this one from two years ago. Donovan Mitchell as a rookie commanding the stage at the dunk contest. Tributes to both Vince Carter and jazz great Daryl Griffith, who competed in the 84 dunk contest. And when it was over with, Donovan, he came home with the hardware as the dunk contest champion in 2018. Well, week two of the XFL season and the XFL already tweeting out some trash talk to the defunct AAF. The post that they tweeted said, we paid our players this week. Yeah, if you know the history there, you know what they're talking about. With cash in their accounts now, these players put on a pretty good show this week, though. Today, Dallas Renegades and LA Wildcats. This one got going in the fourth quarter, really. Former Panthers back Cameron Artis Payne. He's going to go around the corner, beat the defense, and run it in. They built a 19-9 lead. The Wildcats counter, though, through the air. Josh Johnson to the former Ram. Nelson Spruce, his second touchdown reception of the game, and the Wildcats are in this. The XFL, you can go for one, two, or three. This here is the league's first converted three-point attempt. It makes it a one-point game. Wildcats down 19-18. That's when Artis Payne puts the game away, though. Another touchdown run similar to his first. Renegades get the win 25-18. to Hosting the St. Louis Battlehawks. I love the mascot. St. Louis quarterback Jordan Ta'amu dumps it down to Matt Jones into the end zone for a lead. Houston has a pretty good quarterback, too. Check out the sidearm sling by Phillip Walker. Roughnecks win 28-24. Eat your heart out, Patrick Mahomes. 
Hey, on the track, NASCAR season is scheduled to begin today with the Daytona 500, but the race postponed until tomorrow because of the weather. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was leading after just 20 laps. The race will resume at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. More sports beat coming back right after this. The Jazz have a rich history of covering the All-Star game, so we thought that tonight we could look back at the top five Jazz All-Star moments. Okay. Yeah, we start with 2018, then rookie Donovan Mitchell put on that show in the dunk contest that, of course, we won't forget. He brought home the title. Appearing in his first All-Star game, number 14, Ricky Green. <laughs> From the Utah Jazz is Frank Layton. 84, the Utah Jazz had three representatives in the All-Star game. Ricky Green, Adrian Dantley, and head coach Frank Layton. From the Utah Jazz, the mailman, Carl Willow. Guard, John Stockton. Five years later, in 1989, the Jazz would get three players into the All-Star game. Carl Malone, John Stockton, and Big Mark Eaton. The only time the Jazz have had three players in the game. Carl, on a day when the greatest players in the world gathered, you were the greatest of them all. 28 points, 9 rebounds. Congratulations, you've earned this trophy. Now you can pick it up. <laughs> you gotta love it, baby! In that same game, Carl Malone went on to win the All-Star Game MVP with those 28 points and 9 rebounds for the mailman. Thank you, Salt Lake City, for allowing us to showcase the world's greatest athletes. And thank you, Utah Jazz, for the co-MVPs of this year's All-Star Game, Paul Malone and John Stockton. And I will never forget that, 1993, the first time the Utah Jazz hosted the NBA All-Star Game, and Utah's two stars, Stockton and Malone, the co-MVPs. I was hoping Rudy Gobert would get an MVP moment today. Pro basketball out, college hoops in. BYU basketball on the verge of a top 25 ranking for the first time in nine years. Now, BYU's run to the ranks largely thanks to six straight wins and the latest, a gutty, ugly, white knuckle, not for the faint of heart contest at struggling San Diego. Here we go. Slow start for the Cougars, and that's uh, probably an understatement. Jake Toulson leading the way with five points in the first half. Like I said, slow start. Cougars trailed by one at the break. Second half, things start to heat up. Jared Rodriguez, oh goodness, throws down a nasty dunk on Zach Selyus. Down the stretch, BYU up one. Make it three with the tip in from Yoli Childs on the oop. And if it's not broken, don't fix it. TJ Haas to Yoli, hammers it down for the alley-oop game winner. BYU's defense coming up big, huge important win for BYU. Now basketball fans know the saying well, live by the three, die by the three. Well, the Cougars prominently living by the three-pointer this season. BYU had a program record 18 trifectas in Thursday's blowout win over LMU. BYU is the number one three-point shooting team in America at 42 percent and have made 10 or more three-pointers in a school record 15 games this season. Like I said, living by the three. Sam? Well, the Aggies have been creeping their way back into the tournament consideration. Bracketologist Joe Lunardi now has Utah State as one of his last four teams in the tournament after last night's win at Fresno State. Justin Bean continues to have an outstanding season. He was 6 of 10 from the field, including 2 for 2 from three-point range. He finished with the team's only double-double, 15 points, 11 boards. Sam Merrill, he was the motor that ran the machine. Another big game for him, 8 of 15 from the field. He made a team-high three threes and scored a game-high 24 points. Diogo Brito, 10 points. Nemius Keda, 7 points and 9 rebounds. The Aggies, they've won four straight now. Once we, you know, we went through our tough stretch where we weren't playing very well and to be honest, we weren't super healthy. Now we're starting to get healthy. We're playing much, much better. We've been pretty good defensively all year, but we're starting to play much, much better on the offensive end and, and it's starting to show. I think uh, a month ago we might not have won this game, yeah. um, especially point. on the road against a, a team that, you know, that, that goes on runs. And uh, so I think it shows how much we've grown over the last month and a half.
dunks from the dunk contest, from the All-Star Game, and even from this guy's dorm room. You've got to see this. Our videos of the week when we come back. Look out! Hey, welcome back, and thanks for watching Sports Beat Sunday. The show's almost over, but, and what a week it was. The Jazz win their fourth straight, an unforgettable All-Star weekend for them. And plenty of excitement in college hoops. BYU wins on an epic alley-oop, but we have plenty more epic videos for you, like right now. Yeah, how about this from the high school basketball oh! coach? Are you kidding me? This kid is in high school! I've always wondered, what do you do after this? Let's take it to the auxiliary gym, guys. <laughs> Aaron Gordon. How did he not win the dunk contest? Oh, it's a travesty. Man. Well, I guess when you let celebrities be judges, that's what happens. Well, if you thought he couldn't top that, look what he did in his final dunk over Taco Fall, one of the tallest guys, if not the tallest guy in the NBA. And he jumps over him. No Congratulations problem. to Aaron Gordon, the KSL NBA dunk champion. That's twice. He's Want to get on the excitement? Some fans held their own dunk contest. Yes. Sam, is that Robert Tractor Trailer? Look out! <laughs> I think he missed it, too. That's unfortunate. <laughs> you can tell the reaction on his face, too, I think. Ouch. <laughs> hey, have you ever uh, seen a baseball disappear? This kid's a magician. Look at that. Hey, you know. I think that still counts as a hit by pitch. It does. Take the easiest base. base he'll ever earn. At least the most comfortable. <laughs> How's this for uh, a knockout? Okay. Whoops. Not going to remember that one tomorrow. Lights out. Oh, oh, my goodness. Little counter jab with the left hand. Puts him on his back. I hope the paycheck was good. Like it's, Stephen it's A. Smith coaching at All-Star Weekend in the Celebrity Game. And, oh, we know Stephen A.'s temper. He's going to get teed up. Stephen A is a coach? That is terrible! <laughs> Guy Fieri's out there. Too. Abominable! <laughs> about Stephen Adams? Uh, this is an oh interesting form from just beyond half court. <laughs> what? It counts. It counts. And the shimmy! Give me more Stephen Adams shimmy. Is that Stephen Adams or is that Jason Momoa? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. All right, Rising Stars game, Luca. He says, I can do half-court shots, banks it home, kiss it off the glass, count it. Not too many guys get to play in the Rising Stars game and the All-Star game. Mm. Luca got to do that. Still like Trey Young's better, but that was good. Uh, the Rising Stars game produced a bevy of epic dunks. How about Zion Williamson from Ja Morant? These are going to be two MVPs down the road. MVP, MVP, MVP. I don't know how many times, but these two guys are ridiculous. Now, here's Miles Bridges. Look at this. Oh, plenty of dunks, like you said, coming in this game. Yeah, hey, just step out of the way, right? You don't want to become the other end of a poster. Okay, oh. okay. Little glass action. Mm hmm. Check out this nasty crossover. The dude goes flying <laughs> into the next time zone. He's in the next time zone. <laughs> Takes out his teammates. But you got to make it. You got to make oh, it to all punctuate right. it. All right, well, how's this? This player hadn't gotten a lot of playing time on senior night, so his opponent passed him the ball to get him some points to finish off the game. I love this. Hey, you've been working hard. I get yourself some. love it. Now, it would be a shame if we didn't recap this important moment in sports <laughs> history. Happy Gilmore, a failed hockey player, went on to become a star professional golfer and win the gold jacket on the tour championship, all to honor his former coach, Chubbs Peterson. That's like 400 yards. Is that good? <laughs> happy anniversary, Happy. The championship. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> all right, what a shot we have here in lacrosse. You get a lot of these in lacrosse, behind the back, the no-look shots, but they're always nice. I mean, look Ooh. at that. What a shot. Count it. I mean, the extension, whip around. OK, oh. ladies, I see it. What an all-star weekend for the Utah Jazz, but it was bogey. Boyan Bogdanovich with the <laughs> through the leg special to start off the week with the bang. Porzingis had no idea. Look at this guy on his bike. Uh, hey. Count me out of trying this sometime, but those are skills, skills I don't have. It's a way to end All-Star Weekend. Great show. Thanks for watching, everyone.